Who needs a slasher film when we got... Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. And this is the best death metal albums that I heard during the month of March of 2024. First, we'll be giving you some honorable mentions, and then the top pick. Onward and upward we go. <laughs> Danatek by Deception, a symphonic death metal album released on March 22nd. Music? Eh, not bad by any stretch, and will be very much enjoyed by uh, fans of Septic Flesh. But for me personally, I'd rather just listen to them. But what I do want to call attention to is the album cover, which is solid. It's, uh, it does have one giant nitpick, which is I wish that they would have stood by the artwork, which is beautiful. Kind of like the good old days of the 70s where, you know, bands would be willing to stand by the artwork and sometimes even just have just pure artwork with nothing on it. No band name, no song, no album title, nothing. Um, heck, they can even, if they're adamant, keep the D. But why they placed it where they did it just ruins uh the the energy and relationship with the the imagery it just it doesn't make any sense it feels out of place it just it's d fights with the profound visual uh that just becomes quite frankly an eyesore it's just a huge distraction uh not not you know i guess in many ways you can call this a d pick <laughs> but uh it still is uh it's, it's still a pretty pretty solid album this is actually a band coming via by norway with this being uh the fourth studio album and i i'd say check it out it's it's uh it's got enough to keep you entertained i think graphic bell rating gives it a 74. <laughs> Unextinct by Hideous Divinity, a death metal album released on March 22nd. Reminds me a little of Cataclysm, but with like longer, more complex or progressive uh, song structures. So think if Cataclysm were to take on the song structures of like a Dark Angel. They come via Rome, Italy, with this being disc number five in their catalog. Ultimately, I love the, the concept of having longer, more complex songs in my death metal. And the musicianship and the pro uh, production is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, seriously, kudos for the, the A-plus production. It's so crisp and intense, and it just it hits you hard. It feels, feels amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they just don't do much with the longer length. Uh, which to me is a huge disappointment. I, I typically say this, that like the real reason why I think that Thrash oftentimes is superior over the likes of Death is because unlike Thrash, Death has a tendency to sometimes forget or grasp the importance of overall pace balance on an, an entire album. I get it. It's Death. It's supposed to not have any fluff. But... In this case, if you are going to have that length of, uh, of duration of, uh, of songs, uh, like six plus minutes we're talking, I, I, to me, I think you have to. I think, I mean, after 30, 40 minutes of, 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 of just straight death uh, metal with that kind of pace, I mean, you, you, got, you, need, you got to have a break, you know? Like, this is over 50 minutes. It's just, it, to me, outside of a handful of moments where it's, it, it, you know, in a couple instrumentals that keeps the pace down a little bit otherwise it's just it's just way too much uh but many of you still will really enjoy this it really is a strong disc and it's well produced and the musicianship is phenomenal uh graphic model rating gives it an 81 right, 
Those were the honorable mentions. Now on to pick number one, best, best death metal album of the month of March 2024. We got it here. Vault of Horrors by Aborted, a death metal slash grindcore album released on March 15th. Who needs a slasher film when we got Aborted? Here's to, in many ways, the reverse script. Up to this point, I actually have never been an Aborted fan. In fact, grindcore in general is one of the only subgenres of metal that I have always struggled with. Uh, and actually, we'll throw in horror films for that matter, too, given the nature of, of the theme with, with this band and this album. But Vault of Horrors really, really, really works for me because of three distinct reasons. Number one, it is incredibly well produced. Every single note is crystal clear mixed to perfection and just has an emotional connection to it because you can really hear every symbol, every riff, every moment uh, from all the instruments. It's just, it's amazing. Number two is that I love the addition of both old school and new school riffs and breakdowns. It adds like another layer of, of intensity uh, and well, change of pace when otherwise would be, you know, the electricness of, of grindcore. So, which again, I think is key. I just talked about it. That pace setting, despite the fact that it also has, you know, no fluff, it uh, it just kind of knows when to kind of speed things up, take a moment and just break things down. Even if it is just a riff, it, it really uh, changes your your emotional, uh, you know, spent, you know, this to, to the overall album i just it, it's it's awesome um and and the riffs in speaking of the riffs again it's just it it to me for whatever reason on this album it just it hits harder and different than on any of their other albums in the past for me which you know everyone's gonna have their different take on it but but i loved it and you know side note aborted comes uh via beverin belgium who started all the way back in 1995 with this being uh, album number 12 and last but not least is the album cover sure i hate their logo granted it's death metal it works perfectly fine but this vault is so well designed i badly wish that it was actually a film i mean ladies and gents this is this is how you not only design a great cover, but you do so and you do so in such a way where you tell a story. I'm not gonna lie. I have popped this disc in several times just because I want to sit back, zoom in, and just investigate through the the album uh cover artwork and just imagine play stories in my head imagine fabricate you know what you know again that's what i was saying i think this is better than than a horror film honestly our imaginations are powerful and mine is definitely and i just i just keep running with it it's just uh it's it's amazing it's chock full of all sorts of like nods to you know the the, the genre of like horror and, and slasher fix like there's a dawn of the, the dead poster in the back the in the movie stack there's you know halloween and evil and evil dead uh the classic you know home sweet home wooden sign and you know some some bonus actually inspiration here uh with the formation of the figure so like in the center so you know, this is this is actually a technique that uh, has kind of grown an increasingly long tail of appealbacks over the years. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them. We don't have that that much time, but I'm going to give you two of them. So, The Descent in 2005. It, it was a film. 
uh, which, you know, see the similarities, right? It took inspiration from the silence of the film, uh, Silence of the Lambs, which most people probably never knew it, it, it existed. It's an iconic movie with an iconic uh, movie design, uh, but it also comes with a hidden gem in plain sight that most people probably aren't aware of. Are you ready for this? So focus on the mouth. You see the skull, or wait, zoom in, focus. It's not a skull, it's actually a series of female figures positioned to take the form of what our eyes would perceive, especially from a distance on small scale, a skull. Pretty cool, right? And you see the similarities. As for the album, it to you know to listen to, it absolutely slays. Longtime fans, yeah, you're probably gonna you're gonna gripe with this, I'm sure. But personally, I freaking love it, and I I definitely recommend it. Graphic Mal rating gives it an 87. And that was the list. Check back very soon for the other subgenres of both rock and metal. Until the next time, cheers and keep on rocking.